Hey, welcome back. Uh, we're here for, you know, another week and uh, still top side of the grave, so thankful for that. Thankful for all the thoughts that have been sent out. Everybody's saying hi, making sure I'm okay. And I thank my beautiful wife for making sure I'm staying on top of everything. Uh, we've got a lot to cover tonight. Uh, one thing that uh, I'm really excited about is that Unify version 5.2.9 has been released. So if you're not out on the Ubiquity community, you should really go out and, and check it out because then you can stay up to date with all, all the news. And just look at this as I scroll through this. All this, all the enhancements, all the new features. Um, and one thing, I, I don't know if you know this, but even in 5.2.7, Ubiquity could push firmware to the controllers. And that's kind of important. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but you can see all of the enhancements, all of the firmware changes. So here we've got our Unify 5.2.7 controller. We're going to go ahead and upgrade this guy to 5.2.9. It's always a good sign when I can remember my password. That's something else. Down in the comments, if you could put um, how you manage your passwords or how you create passwords, that's a whole other video. I'm going to link to another video from a university in London, and it's where they uh, have a deep learning machine. They show how easy it is to break passwords and then talk about you know, what's the proper way to create a password. So we really have this whole paradigm shift about passwords and what's secure and what's not. And it's pretty interesting. So we're going to do a video on that too. But uh, yeah, like I said, put down in there, you know, how many characters are your passwords? How do you come up with your passwords? Are they pass phrases? Things like that. I, I want to hear what everybody's doing. So we went to our download link from the 5.2.9. And we're going to come in here. We'll remove that old download. And something that just occurred to me as I was helping uh, someone out with their controller is that I should be archiving every single one of these. Now, uh, a friend of mine on the community who's, uh, I believe, in the England area actually has archived every version of the controller for Windows, but not Linux. I'm really thinking, because I tried to find the 4.7.5 download tonight, that I should start that archive, or if somebody else are, out there already has it, let me know. But I, I did, uh, you know, scream for some help out on the community for a 4.7.5 download. And there I go. I just, I just deleted 5.2.7, and I said I should create an archive. That's all right. We'll get around to that. Go ahead and grab the new one. And we'll do our sudo dpackage hyphen i, point to the dev file. It'll ask for that super secret password. We'll put that in. It's going to stop the. And yes, we have a backup. I did check my auto backups. The backups are there on the server. Restarted it for us. So let's refresh this guy. Okay, so we're logged in. Let's take a look at our devices. And we can see that our lab switch is connected and needs an upgrade. I'm not going to do that here real quick. I disconnected my my version one um, AP Pro, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so you see the APAC light is online. There is no upgrade because I upgraded uh, that to the latest version with 5.2.7. So we you know we've got a lot of the same options here. We haven't uh, messed around a lot with this firewall. It is very similar to the edge router. Um, so we will do, somebody did ask for a specific video on this, so I, I think we'll do that at some 
some point. Uh, I did send him some screenshots, so we'll see if the screenshots come back with a with a thumbs up or the positive. If they didn't, I'll go ahead and create the video. Probably something we should do. We should do anyway. So we're on 5.2.9, and so let's let's kind of talk a little bit about what I I you know somebody sent this notification to me today, and it's from Brandon out on the uh, the community and it's under unify and unify wireless and he wants to let us know hi unify users wanted to announce that of that as of 5.0.7 release of the unify generation model uh, generation one models are now feature frozen all of those models that, that includes in the gen one that's your uap your uap uh, lr um, so you know your standard UAP and your UAP LR, the ones with the green uh, LED ring, the UAP Outdoor and the UAP Outdoor 5, UAP AC, the UAP AC V2, the UAP AC Outdoor, the UAP In Wall, the UAP Pro, which uh, looks just like a standard UAP and UAP LR, but has the the uh, the blue ring. I don't know if you can see that. It says AP Pro. And here I'm not I'm not messing with you. Look, that one says LR there. And then this is uh, the first gen UAP. Um, AC and I'm going to talk to you about this in a second too and then you've got the UAP Outdoor Plus and this is the result of our failed attempts to integrate generation 2 features and other ongoing features which caused various performance and stability issues across customer installs and therefore the firmware revert here for anyone desiring the latest greatest features or continued improvements in system performance, we recommend Generation 2 hardware, uh, such as the UAP AC Lite, the UAP AC LR, the UAP AC Pro, and the UAP AC EDU. And it is worth noting that if you need an outdoor access point, that as long as it's under a canopy, uh, these AC Pros are supposed to be weather resistant. I wouldn't go putting them out there where you to put an outdoor or an outdoor plus. So, um, it's not to say that you can't use these, and Ubiquity is certainly not saying they're not going to support these. What they're saying is that these are feature frozen. Feature frozen, which means these devices are still going to work, they're still going to be supported, they're just not getting new features. So if you want new features, you know, buy newer models. So, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm still deploying the Outdoor Plus. I, I have these um, all over the place. So, let's talk about that firmware revert that was last edited Thursday. And so, they realized that with all of those models that they just talked about, that the newer firmware caused some real stability issues. And so, through the new controller, they actually were able to push... Um, that firmware and if you look at the how family which is the a ap pro then it pushed that 3.7.8.5016 which is what they pushed to the controller i saw it as an upgrade i pushed it um, i didn't really notice i wasn't having any problems but um, i do know that some people were having some issues with outdoor pluses and and so that probably did address that so I'm not saying don't don't buy it. I'm saying what Ubiquity is saying is they are feature frozen. There is a huge difference between we're not supporting it and feature frozen. Until they come out and say it's end of life, we're not supporting it anymore, don't freak out. So, um, and if, if you've got a bunch of Outdoor Plus or any of those other models and you just don't want them, I'll give you my address. You can send them over and we'll put good use to it. Um, I'd like to show you 
this little guy. And this is a Ubiquity Networks INS-3AF-I-G. And what this is, this is uh, in the one, one of the last videos I call this my Ubiquity Lipstick. And I'll show you why. Is this thing going to load? Ah. Let's see. So what this is, it's a uh, gigabit. So um, what this guy is, kind of looks like a like a lipstick tube. I don't know. The engineers, they're, they're smarter than I am. Uh, but what this is, is if you look at this side, it says PoEN, 802.3AF. Well, we all know that that's standard PoE, so if you had, you know, a competing switch, which, I don't know, can I, I mean, you all know the color. I don't think i got to show the name. It's going to go back and sit in the lab. It, I have it for compatibility at this point. And I'm not saying they make bad products. I'm just saying that, you know, I only use it where I have to these days. Um, then, on the other side, it says PoE out, 24 volt, 0.5 amps. So what this does is this takes standard PoE from another manufacturer switch. It could be Isco, say, it could be Cisco, Juniper, Brocade, uh, Zycel, D-Link, Netgear, name a standard PoE switch. You're going to plug the standard PoE into this side. And then if you've got, you know, a passive PoE, you're going to come out of this port into this. And so it's, what it's doing is it's taking that, that standard 802.3AF PoE and it's knocking it down uh, to the 20, you know, the 24 volt passive so that you can power your uh, Ubiquity devices using other manufacturers' PoE switches. So uh, these are available. Um, these should be um, flooding the channel uh, and available anytime. So, you know, be on the lookout. So if you want to use somebody else's PoE switch with your 24-volt passive, pick up some of these guys then you don't have to have power bricks everywhere you just have this guy in line and you're in good shape um, one other thing I wanted to talk about tonight was uh, we saw we saw one of our friends play uh, disc golf with uh, a burnt out access point and what I've got here is I actually have two of these first gen APACs and we are coming up on 3,000 3, subscribers, and I want to thank you all, you know, very much for that. Um, but I want to know what you want to see us do with these. So um, I do have a liquid nitrogen doer, so we could freeze these guys, hit them with a hammer. Uh, we could even shoot them. Uh, my buddy has a pistol bay in his shop, so we could freeze them, shoot them with pistols. We could also take them out, throw them up in the air, shoot them with shotguns. We could run them over. Get creative. Put it down in the comments. And what I'm going to do is whatever idea has the most traction, when we hit 3,000 sub subscribers, that is what we're going to do with these two access points. So um, one other thing I wanted to talk about was I know, I don't know if you all know or if you do know that my monetization was uh, pulled because I created a video called how to block ads with an edge router so YouTube has pulled my AdSense and that was the only way that I had ever planned on monetizing this channel and I was gonna the only reason I was monetizing it was to buy new hardware to get in the lab to do videos on um, and so what I've done now is I do have uh, an Amazon affiliate store and anything that I do talk about um, I'll link to that but uh, I've had several people reach out and ask me, well, why don't, well, you know, why don't you ask for money or anything like that? So it's really difficult for me to do that. Um, but I will tell you that if you go to the main page, what I have done was I have linked to PayPal. 
And um, if if you feel like donating money to the channel to buy new gear or things like that, it's greatly appreciated. I'm definitely not asking you to do it, but I, enough people have sent me messages that I thought I would go ahead and throw that up there. So uh, look for that PayPal link at the header of the channel. Uh, I want to thank you again for tuning in this week. Uh, we are going to have some more technical videos starting you know, later this week and, and next week. Uh, but if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You know, please subscribe, please comment and share. Make sure you're leaving all those comments down there. And I will see you in the next video.